Hey everybody, welcome to the first video in the Camp Quarantine's informational series. Today, we're going to be talking about vaccines. My name's Capucine. I'm Adele. I'm Zareen. I'm Naharka. I'm Taylor. Hi, I'm Evan. I'm Intira. There's been a lot of talk recently about a vaccine for COVID-19, but with all that talk, there's also been a lot of misinformation. So we decided to clear some things up with a crash course in vaccines. First, we're going to go over what a vaccine is. Second, how they protect people. And third, the steps to making a vaccine available to the public. Let's start off with what a vaccine is. To explain that, we have to quickly delve into how the human immune system works. The immune system is how your body protects itself from bacteria, viruses, and other things that may enter your body. When a virus enters your body, it encounters white blood cells. Unlike red blood cells, these white blood cells are designed to protect your body against foreign substances. It's like a team of defenders, but for your body. Over a period of time, these white blood cells analyze the virus and produce something called an antibody. Antibodies are basically tiny structures of protein designed to detect and neutralize, or make harmless, specific threats to the body, like a virus. Once you have antibodies circulating through your blood, the body knows how to fight that specific disease. Antibodies are the reason a person can be immune to a disease. Ever wondered why you can only get chicken pox once? You have antibodies to thank for that. So back to vaccines. The purpose of a vaccine is to help your immune system create those antibodies. So when a disease or virus enters your body, you will recognize it and be able to fight it off. Vaccines do this by injecting a weakened version of the virus into your bloodstream. The virus isn't strong enough to make you sick or do any damage, but since it's still a virus, your body can analyze it and create antibodies specifically designed to stop it. That way, if you catch the disease in real life, your body already knows how to fight it off and you're safe. Now there are many different types of vaccines. Some types, like an inactivated vaccine, actually kill the virus before it's injected into your body. These vaccines sometimes have to be taken more than once because the dead virus isn't as similar to the real virus as with other vaccines, so the antibodies might not be as effective. Other types, like the subunit vaccine, only contain a small part of the virus, so the body can create antibodies to stop it without actually introducing the full virus into the body. Think of it like cooking an egg. You could fry it, boil it, poach it, scramble it, cook it dozens of different ways, but no matter which method you choose, in the end, you always have a delicious meal. Vaccines are the same way. There are many different ways you can create a vaccine, but in the end, they all have the same purpose, helping your body create antibodies to fight off disease. Let's move on to how vaccines protect people. It's probably fairly obvious by now that vaccines protect individual people by helping them develop antibodies to fight off disease. But did you know that vaccines can also protect people even if they don't have the vaccine? It's true, through a concept called herd immunity. What's herd immunity, you may ask? Let me explain. Imagine you have 100 people in a room. Of those 100 people, 90 are vaccinated and 10 are not. Now, a virus enters the room, but the virus can only spread through non-vaccinated people. Since most of the people are vaccinated, the virus can't spread and will never reach those 10 people who didn't get the vaccine. That's herd immunity. Except in real life, we're talking a much larger scale, with millions of people instead of 100. Now, it's important to remember, herd immunity does not mean you don't need to get vaccinated. Some people, such as the elderly, infants, or people with a compromised immune system, can't get vaccinated because their body won't be able to fight off the virus, even in its weakened form. These are the people herd immunity is protecting. But herd immunity doesn't work if a large enough number of people choose not to get vaccinated. Imagine if in our room of 100 people, 40 weren't vaccinated instead of 10. The virus is going to have a much easier time reaching all those vulnerable people and spreading through the population. Basically, if you can get vaccinated, do it. Not just for yourself, but for those who are physically unable to. By vaccinating yourself, you may save someone else's life. All right, now let's finish off with how a vaccine is made available to the public. Unfortunately, this process can take up to several years, but it's worth it to make sure the vaccine is safe for everybody. The entire process starts with a single scientist, or a team of scientists, developing the vaccine, or the beginnings of it, in a lab. Once they think their vaccine will work, they submit it to the FDA, or the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA thoroughly tests both the vaccine and the lab in which it was produced in order to see if it has the potential to work. These tests can take up to a few years, depending on the results. Specifically, the FDA is looking to see if the vaccine is safe and if it will actually have an effect. The findings also have to be presented before a committee for approval. But once the FDA does approve the vaccine, 
that's when they can start testing it on humans. Now, there are three phases to human testing in order to maximize the safety of the participants. First, the vaccine is given to a small group of 20 to 100 volunteers. These people are monitored to see if the vaccine has any negative side effects for a short period of time, usually a couple months to a year. If the vaccine is safe and effective for these people, then testing moves on to phase two. Phase two means giving the vaccine to people who may be more affected by it. This means older people, younger people, people who suffer from certain conditions, and anybody who the vaccine may affect differently. This phase goes on for a longer time, and the people from phase one are still being monitored to see if the vaccine has any long-term effects. If both the people from phase one and two are proven to be safe and have developed antibodies thanks to the vaccine, then testing can move on to the third and final phase. Phase three involves giving the vaccine to larger amounts of people, thousands of people at a time, really, and this large amount of people makes it likely that the FDA will be able to spot any negative effects that the vaccine may have. And finally, if the vaccine is shown to be safe in effect phases one, two, and three, the FDA and CDC, or Center for Disease Control, will begin to make the vaccine slowly available to the public, which means you and me. That may seem like a lot of steps before we have a coronavirus vaccine, but don't lose hope. Human testing is actually happening right now, and we can rest assured that if a vaccine is made available to the public, it will almost certainly be one that is safe to use. Okay, that's all for today. And I hope you learned something about vaccines and understand a little bit more about what's going on with finding a way to stop COVID-19. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.